Good afternoon, and thank you for watching. I'm Raymond Nagam, Associate Director of Music at St. John the Divine. That was the delightful Fugue in G Minor, BWV 578, by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's sometimes called the Little Fugue, even though it's not actually that short, in order to distinguish it from the much larger and more elaborate Fantasia and Fugue in G Minor. If you enjoyed that piece, please consider joining our Friends of Music at St. John the Divine. Your support helps us keep these recitals free and available to all during this period when, unfortunately, we're not able to offer in-person concerts. You can go to stjohndivine.org donate or use the link in the Facebook event description. Either way, choose Friends of Music from the drop-down menu. The next two pieces are by a Spanish and a Portuguese composer. The Spanish composer, Pablo Bruna, was one of many famous blind organists throughout history. He lived and worked his whole life in the small town of Daroca in northeast Spain. About the Portuguese composer, Antonio Correa Praga, almost nothing is known, not even the dates of his birth and death. But we're fortunate that this particular piece of music has survived and come down to us. Both pieces make colorful use of syncopation, and in particular, a syncopated rhythm of three plus three plus two, ya ta 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 dum, ya ta 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 dum. It's a characteristic rhythm of Spanish and Portuguese music, and also of a lot of Latin American music. In addition, the piece by Braga uses the powerful trumpet stops uh, that were found on Portuguese organs. These were often mounted horizontally, uh, pointing straight at the listener uh, for increased brilliance. And they were the musical ancestors of things like the state trumpet at St. John the Divine, which is also mounted horizontally on the wall and faces the listener directly. You might wonder if things like this catchy and kind of irreverent bataille or battle piece were actually performed in church, and the answer seems to have been yes. There are, after all, many battle scenes in the Old Testament, and also in the book of Revelation where St. Michael fights against the devil and casts down the dragon. It could also be interpreted in a more spiritual or metaphysical sense as a battle of good versus evil. This is the Tiento de Primo Tono by Pablo Bruna and the Bataille de Sexto Tono by Antonio Correa Praga.
Every week at these recitals, I play at least one piece by a living composer. The reason I do that comes from my doctoral dissertation and my research on Serge Kusevitsky, who was the conductor of the Boston Symphony Orchestra from 1924 to 1949. Those years were considered the golden age of American orchestras, a time when classical music was at the height of its popularity in this country. And I discovered that during those years, the BSO played anywhere between 25 and 50% music by living composers every single year. I was completely staggered when I found that out. And I started wondering what if arts organizations did the same thing today? When we launched this concert series, I felt that here was a chance, an opportunity to do something about it with my own performances. Today's living composer is Adolphus Hale Stork, who is professor of music at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. His pieces have been performed by almost all the major symphony orchestras in the U.S. and by all the top choral ensembles as well. We're fortunate that he has written a couple of pieces for organ, too. This is his Adagio and Fugue in F minor. Both Adagio and Fugue are based on the same theme, which you'll hear at the very beginning of the Adagio. It may start out sounding a little bit like a Baroque prelude, uh, but both prelude and Fugue go their own way after that, and they get much richer and more intense than a Baroque piece would. This is the Adagio and Fugue in F minor by Adolphus Hailstork.
Closing today's concert are two pieces by French composers. We had a battle piece earlier, so now I'm going to play something calm and soothing, the Chant de Paix, or Song of Peace, by Jean Langlais. Langlais, like Pablo Bruna, was blind, but also like Bruna, it didn't hold him back. He rose to the very top of his profession nonetheless. In this piece, there's a wonderful melody full of big leaps uh, played on a four-foot flute stop by the feet. There's no deep bass at all until the very last chord, and the music just seems to hover weightlessly in midair. The last piece is by Henri Mulet, a strange and enigmatic person. Uh, he gave up composing in 1911, uh, moved out of Paris in 1937, and spent most of the last 30 years of his life in total obscurity in southern France, where apparently he would go days at a time without speaking to anyone. Fortunately, he wrote a small number of brilliant pieces before this change of personality, and this is the happiest of all of them, the Carillon Sortie. If you've enjoyed this concert, please consider making a donation to our Friends of Music. Your contribution helps make these Tuesday concerts possible and supports our amazing cathedral choir, as well as other musical events at St. John the Divine. From all of us here at the cathedral, stay safe and may God bless you all.